The uh, painting of, uh, of a still life is an exciting thing to do. And here's where I brought in a bag of uh, different assorted item and items that uh, people can, uh, can look at. And also according to its shape, it's the most exciting way to uh, start painting by putting these objects down, as you can see, and using the uh, design of the bag also within the still life. So here I have a piece of paper, 140 pound weight, uh, 15 by 22 uh, bow clip to a uh, masonite board and uh, I'll start uh, drawing the uh, the uh, the smaller shape that will become the larger shape because that's the idea is to take some of the shapes and make them bigger than life and then other shapes to make them smaller than life but to begin with I'm uh, using a water soluble uh, pencil and uh, I'm uh, just uh, sketching uh, lightly and I'm not going to sketch the entire thing all the way around uh, because then I, get, I can make object comes into it without it being uh, completely enclosed. So that's always kind of interesting. You can always change your mind on one side. And with a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and water, and by the way I use a lot of water, on the, uh, the paper and also the paper is flat it's not on a stand with uh, a slight uh, slant to it it's uh, it's all flat and then we just put these colors in we drop them in with this uh, with the brush and uh, and let the water uh, move it uh, move it around uh, what's nice about this approach is that you don't know exactly where you're going to go because it's the next object that you pick up will depend upon what size it will be and all of that type of thing. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of a darker part right up on top, we'll leave a little bit of a ridge up there. Uh, the pot is uh, doing very well as far as the water is mingling with the uh, color. And so uh, I'll continue on with this, uh, this approach uh, as, I, as I proceed. When you're not so sure of where you're going to end up, then just leave it light or just stop painting that area. Now I'm going to take my, my watercolor pencil and I'm uh, drawing a design that's in the, uh, the pot itself. And when it touches the wet paper, it, uh, it makes it darker and then the others is, uh, is lighter. But water will be touching those two and then I get my, my design. So I'm going to use a little bit of brush here and try to mingle those, uh, those together. So, so far now we have used the uh, water um, soluble pencil to draw it and we use the watercolor pencil to, uh, uh, watercolor crayon rather, uh, to uh, put in the design. Now these are little jack-o'-lanterns or things I picked up at the Marcus Fest fast and I thought they were really kind of a neat shape and I'm not really interested in making the shape but just to get the uh, orange up there that I think would uh, uh, be the color and uh, also putting some water next to it so it kind of blend and so forth and then some deeper uh, deeper colors that will uh, be dropped right inside of, uh, of those colors okay now here's my stick this is the, just an ordinary uh, dowel rod that has been shaved down like a pencil tip and going inside of that wet, bringing out some of the, uh, of the wet color uh, to draw with being outside of where the white paper is. Uh, so it's not just outlining. It's uh, just a fantastic look when you get the painted area and then you get that, that line uh, from the... Uh, the stick. Uh, now I'm going to take a uh, smaller brush and uh, <clears throat> begin to proceed. Uh, okay, I'm going to link this now up to my uh, my pot. This is a kind of a bluish green that I'm using to uh, to link it, going up like that. Just being free as you uh, you possibly can. Uh, with uh, with your hand and, and the stroke. Uh, 
uh, get some color mixed up here. Now what I did was I, I drew in the cup that I'm going to put in here. Now the cup is, uh, is going to be uh, quite large. And, and you know, when you do that, uh, you've got to watch the sizes of all your shapes. And I might have made this cup just a little bit too large because it's almost as large as the uh, pot. But look at the perspective of it. We're looking down at this cup, so we see inside the cup. And also, uh, we also see the side of the cup. It's a lot like what the uh, Cubists have done, showing you two uh, views at the, uh, at the same time. Don't forget to use a lot of water when you are, are doing this so that you keep that water quality uh, look. And notice that I didn't paint all the way around the cup, uh, just like I did on the little vase that I put with the jack lanterns in it that doesn't have a, it's not completed. And then I'm bringing down the orange down inside the platter for that the cup is uh, sitting on. And I, I push my paintbrush down so I can get all that water out of it and onto the, uh, onto the uh, plate. Now I've taken my stick again and I've made some curved lines that you can see that, uh, that, I did a, that I didn't show you on the video. Now there's that little dark cup that you can see over to the uh, right and that's the other uh, shape that I'm going to do. Leave a little white edge between the top of it and I'm going in for a, uh, a darker value. And I'm not going to do all of it, I'm leaving one side unpainted. Now, if you look at the uh, composition and how they're lining up, I think it's uh, going right down the middle. So we're going to have to have to have to do something there. So I'm going to put the bag in, and I drew the bag in so it's a little bit bigger, and it sort of uses as a backdrop for both of these uh, these objects. And then I'm uh, taking the design off the bag and putting them in, and I'm doing that with a uh, uh, oil pastel uh, so that when the water goes on top it'll just uh, crawl right off. You can see where it was doing the crawling and then, then I'm going around the, uh, the cup itself now this is where I want a, a lost edge uh, with the bag next to the blue vase. And so uh, again, I'm not painting all sides of it. Now to me, this is an exciting way of doing a still life. Instead of uh, arranging a still life and then painting what you see, uh, you take one object at a time. And you start making up your own your own compositions. When I put a color down, I try to go back in with a little deeper color while it's still wet. So we can get that watery look and also get the value changes from middle to dark. Now the bag really you know, tied those three objects together, which I'm really, really pleased with. And so that instead of having that white in the bag, I'm going to make it uh, kind of like a yellow. You notice I'm not tying anything into the, the format, the edges of the, uh, of the paper. 
so far is just centering on just the uh, the objects uh, itself using my brush to see if I can break down that particular barrier between the uh, vase and the bag uh, which is not, not looking too bad you always got to remember to take the risk you, if you if you don't take a risk with something you're not going to learn uh, and also you're not going to know if there's any surprises I think there are surprises in this <clears throat> that when I take a risk I can really uh, uh, see if it's a mistake and if it's a mistake well that's a surprise too okay now there that is now I've got a gourd that I'm uh, going to be painting it uh, comes from the farmers market and uh, it's going is uh, it's really a beautiful uh, it almost looks like a piece of ceramic it's got the green on top and then it's got purple and yellow and white as as far as the uh, the bottom is uh, is concerned and I thought oh that's really a nice shape and so I'm going to put in some yellow here using uh, I think I really should have a bigger brush but you notice how I'm just swishing around and trying to get the the shape of it first I'm doing it with uh, yellow um, this is uh, cold pressed paper and then I'm putting in the uh, the purple on uh, on top of it Now still modifying that shape uh, so that I can uh, look at it and find out that it's a morphous shape it's, and it's, uh, it complements. Now the next phase is fitting it with the format, which means the outer edges of the paper now, the still life has to be tied into that. And so I'm going to bring this bright red uh, down from the top. These are really bright colors. Very carefully, I'm using a uh, flat brush. And bringing it down to the uh, to the pot. Now I've I've clued it just a little darker red inside there uh, so that I can get darker from dark to right, light, light rather and uh, keeping that edge wet on the long side. Now I have used a white crayon uh, so that the handles of the bag would show up when I would go over it with a with a watercolor. And then dripping some paint and just kind of bringing that out towards the towards the edge. Uh, bring that orange, red rather, out just a little bit more, sort of like a, uh, a straight line. It's part of a design for the uh, for the background. straighten this out just a little bit more then I sprinkle water on top of that wet area the red area to give some uh, uh, texture and now I've got to work with the uh, edges there now I'm going to take one of those edges that is coming down and I'm uh, I'm going to soften that edge so we don't have 
have it so hard all the way across. This is a little bit more interesting when all of a sudden it becomes hard and then soft. And a little bit more painterly too, as I recall. You know, and then I'm uh, putting in little touches here and there. Uh, darker values can go in a little bit later. So I'm going to put in now a darker value close to the pot. You get to see the uh, handles of the bag a little bit more. And uh, we can just leave that go and put some more on top of here. It's so exciting to play with value and color and taking risks to see what colors you should have. Now I'm going to put a nice brilliant blue on this side. It's cobalt blue, a little bit of ultramarine blue with it. trying to uh, paint in sort of a reflection of leaves. I'm finding that my pot is just a little bit too light, the vase, so I'm putting that blue right on top of it uh, to bring it into the, into the composition just a little bit better. And then I'm making up, uh, it could be corn stalks, they could be just shadows of uh, leaves against the wall. Uh, just anything that will make it a, uh, a different pattern. So as I look at it, I think, okay, that was just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to use that same blue to kind of go over the top of, uh, of that. And uh, just, just keep improving. I'm going to drop, drop down there, put some blue there. Blue is nice against that yellow, that orange bag. Uh, that would be a complimentary or a warm and cool next to each other. Uh, all of those things are what you, uh, you look for. Going back in. Now this paper has not been dried, so uh, I think sometimes we want, we're too quick with the dryer and then we lose the, uh, the spontaneity that comes from painting wet into wet, or wet into dry, wet into damp. Okay, I think I should bring that further over. Painting is, is not really a, a recipe, it's what you have on the paper to see what you're going to do to make it uh, more interesting. And in this case, now I think that's turning out to be a lot better than what I had before. And so I'm, uh, it's kind of a uh, hunt and, and find type of thing when you start to paint this way. Now I'm putting my brush down in that fashion to create sort of like a, a texture down there. And uh, hopefully that might, that might work. Okay, as I, as I look at it, I'm analyzing the entire painting. I think that's just a little bit too bright. And so I'm going to calm it down a little bit with a little blue glaze. And, uh, and then you see where the emphasis goes in is to the bag and the cup.
Now looking at the bottom, i have uh, making a pattern of the shape behind the uh, platter. Uh, and I also did uh, some pattern on the right hand side with the red and two stripes. Uh, and then this is a pastel or, or could be a, a colored uh, watercolor crayon. I think it's a watercolor crayon. I'm using orange on that. And so I'm going to block this particular whole area out. It's a little 